Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new study that investigated 10 million different stars in the region right here in the Velo constellation, discovering nothing. There seem to be no aliens talking to us in this region. But let's talk about the implications here and also about how all this was achieved because it's really important to understand. And let's start with the idea of why we think we should be hearing something. Because of the amount of radio communication coming from our planet, it's no surprise that we expect someone out there to be able to hear our communication sometime in the future. But because humans have been releasing radio waves and communicating using radio waves for only a little bit over 100 years, the extent of human radio broadcast is unfortunately not as big and not as widespread as one would imagine. Let me help you visualize by taking a look at this image created by Adam Grossman and Nick Risinger from Planetary Society. If we were to zoom in right around here, this little dot you see, this little pixel, that's the extent of radio broadcasts from the past hundred something years. Here's what all of this looks like if you were to look at it in a little bit more detail. So not surprisingly, not a lot of different quote-unquote aliens are going to be listening to our communications and hearing them just yet. Mostly because we technically just started doing this. We don't really know how long we're going to be doing this for, but we expect that maybe there are other civilizations that have been sending signals for much longer. And not a lot of natural sources produce these types of frequencies, so if we do detect something coming in the very low frequency from somewhere out there in space, and it's somewhat repetitive, it does suggest that it has somewhat artificial or alien origins. And this is exactly what the Australian scientists who published this paper very recently decided to do. Looking at the region near the famous Vela Supernova, where the Vela Pulsar is located, and using the Australian radio telescope, try to identify unusual features of the supernova remnant and the pulsar in the middle. But due to the nature of the observations here, it actually ended up representing roughly around 10 million different stars in our galaxy, suggesting that they were able to analyze emissions from around 10 million stars in the galaxy and identifying any potential artificial emissions. For this, they used a very famous radio astronomy telescope known as the Murchison Wide Field Array that kind of looks like this. It's essentially a collection of antenna that you see on the screen and overall is not a very difficult instrument to build, but it's also extremely accurate. And in the past, it did provide a lot of really interesting data. In this case, because it's only really looking at one single spot in the night skies, it was only able to study a patch of the night skies in the southern hemisphere, meaning that they were really only investigating a very, very, very small part of the night skies. Although when I say small, that's a relative term. It was still about 100 times more in terms of the actual area of the night skies than what we see when we look at the moon. Now in this case, the scientists believe that if any of those 10 million stars had a species of aliens able to produce powerful enough signals like humans can right now, they would have been able to detect these signals within that 17 hour window. But I guess here, one of the limitations is, is of course in regards to the frequencies used. They only use the radio frequencies we use here on Earth for radio communication, more specifically for commercial radios. So in some sense, it could have been on other frequencies, I guess. In other sense, it could also be just not loud enough or is being intercepted by something between those stars and between planet Earth. But a much more important part of the study was really to show how easy it is to analyze these stars while doing research completely unrelated to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. In other words, what the scientists behind the study suggest is that whenever you study different stars out there in the night skies, it's not very difficult to kind of attach the SETI component as part of any study, allowing us to search for more stars as a result. The scientists behind this paper were able to relatively quickly analyze these 10 million stars, identifying, well, pretty much nothing in the process. And so the main purpose of this study was really to show how easy it was to do, not so much that there is no aliens there. Specifically, the scientists behind this paper even suggest that they weren't really expecting to find anything in these 10 million stars, simply because of the total number of stars in the galaxy. They even give us a kind of a visual comparison here that it's essentially equivalent to trying to find human intelligence in the entire ocean around the planet, but only taking a look at the body of water equivalent to a swimming pool. So basically, we just really didn't get to examine a lot of stars in this case, even though 10 million sounds like a lot. 
At the same time, we obviously have no idea if any other alien species that possibly do exist out there would be using the radio waves to communicate to begin with. Maybe it's just a human thing. So obviously there are a lot of assumptions that were made in this study and the scientists make it pretty clear. So here it was really more about the technique than the discovery or the lack of discovery. Because in reality the main purpose of the study was always the Vela Pulsar and the Vela Supernova. This is the region that the scientists were really looking at. And so all these additional observations related to SETI were kind of a bonus. And there are a lot of other limitations of course, especially when it comes to the distances as well. Here specifically, let's go back to the original image I showed you. So if this is the limit of human radio communication since essentially the radio became widespread, it's also really important to remember that as the signals spread away from the planet, they become much more weaker with distance. And eventually at some point they become so weak that they become completely indistinguishable from background radio noise. And so in that sense, after about 100 light years of traveling, most of these signals will become nothing but just simple radio noise that even the most advanced aliens might not be able to detect. So looking for these FM radio emissions or really any other typical radio emissions that we use here on Earth for communication might not really be the best strategy for trying to discover alien communication. Unless we look at this other very specific frequency known as VLF or very low frequency. In the last few years, NASA has been discovering that the VLF emissions seem to be very, very persistent and, well, first of all, we use them to communicate with things underwater like submarines or different types of underwater stations. But because these waves are able to penetrate through pretty much anything, they also seem to form a very unusual, almost like an aura or a layer located right here between the planet's atmosphere and the Van Allen's belts. This unusual formation is not only easily visible, but it's also kind of loud. And it produces very specific frequencies around 10 to maybe 30 kilohertz, not megahertz. These VLF frequencies also generally are not produced by any natural means. So in that sense, if we ever detect VLF frequencies coming from somewhere far, far away, that will be a pretty telltale sign that something unusual is happening there. We originally learned about all of this back in 1996 when NASA's polar spacecraft detected these unusual emissions that nobody could explain at first, but they were obviously coming from within our planet. And what's even more unusual is that this giant bubble of VLF radiation also seems to be to some extent protecting our planet. Or at least it's doing something that resembles the protection of the planet. In other words, this unusual VLF shield seems to actually stop some of the cosmic radiation coming into our planet. But we don't really know enough about this just yet. But apart from the VLF bubble as it's known, there are other unusual observations that can be made about planet Earth that would suggest that some sort of intelligent species lives here. For example, various types of human activities including radioactivity has different effects on Earth's ionosphere which can also be detected from outer space. On top of this, ionosphere is also influenced by various chemical releases that are human-made which could also be detected by looking at our planet from the outside. Lastly, there are a lot of radio emissions coming from the decades of nuclear tests and these chemical emissions are difficult to explain unless someone created them. So if one day we're able to see a planet somewhere out there that possesses very similar features such as unusual VLF emissions, strange activity of ionosphere, possible chemicals in the atmosphere that don't make sense, or a lot of radioactive isotopes that seem to be artificially produced, that would also be a sign of some sort of intelligent or quote-unquote intelligent life living on the planet and influencing the planet's atmosphere. Although chances are, at least according to some of the other studies I've mentioned in the past that you can find somewhere above my head, we're probably never really going to find this. And that's the unfortunate news. Either because of the distances, the age of the transmissions, or a lot of other reasons, the chance for finding life in this matter right now is very, very, very low. But does that mean we should stop? Not at all. Because we keep looking for life and because we keep discovering new techniques, new technologies, and even new incredible um, ideas in physics and chemistry, this actually helps humanity grow in other ways. So we should still keep looking. Just don't really expect that we'll find something. Which is totally fine. But anyway, we'll talk more about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and other ideas related to this 
in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel either on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.